Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. All right, in this one, we're on the ground here at Moffitt Field, and we're talking about getting started with the SciTech or Logitech switch panel. And what better plane than to use to demonstrate the way to go about figuring out and assigning your events than the classic Cessna 172. So let's go ahead, jump inside, and get started. When we look at the panel, it's obvious there's a lot of switches that we're going to be able to map into our switch panel. But when we go and we start getting into things, it can be difficult and daunting at first to try to figure out what events do we use. And sometimes just downloading panels won't work for every plane. However, what we're going to do is take a panel we're going to learn how we go about figuring out the events to begin with. And then what we'll do is use that in the future to figure out other planes. So let's jump into SPAD.next and begin our process. So here we are on the ground and of course we have our SciTech switch panel. Now one of the things that we can do right away is skip all the fun and just click on a knob go to online snippets grab the complete device make sure you uncheck only for current aircraft unless of course you're in the Cessna 172 search for Les O'Reilly that's me so then what you're gonna find is we've got the Microsoft Flight Sim Cessna 172 G1000 switch panel now this is obviously the newest one I've done so that makes the most sense so you want to go ahead select that and you'll see that this is what we used from the getting started video series so you're gonna click OK and it's gonna ask to replace everything and you're going to say yes and now just like that you've got the exact same panel configuration that we're gonna work with one of the things with trying to figure out what to do is to leverage built-in functionality in the add-on section. So in the add-on section we have the data monitor and the event monitor. And for this video we're going to focus in on the event monitor because almost everything we need to do with the standard planes has not too many things that use LVARs or direct data access. We're able to do it with events. So let's go ahead and let's fire this up. So now what we're going to do though is we're going to undock it. And the reason for undocking it is so that we can have it separate from the rest of the GUI and we can still go back to the rest of the GUI. And if you've got more than one monitor, well, I can always put the event monitor on another monitor. So now let's go ahead and let's get ourselves into the plane and with our event monitor and our SPAD view available to us. So when we start the event monitor, anything that happens is going to show up. So we can start the day off by simply going to the beacon and saying, all right, let's switch the beacon. And when we switch the beacon, we can see that we got Microsoft Flight Sim beacon light set. So right off the bat, it set it to a value of one. And if we switch the beacon light off, we're going to see that it sets beacon light set zero. So this is great. It's not using a toggle command. So now what we want to do is let's go back into SPAD and what we would have done is we would have gone to our beacon switch and again we would have added an event so we'll pretend like nothing was there we simply would add an event and for when the switch is set to the on state we want to add an event and because that's a sim event we want to send simulation event it's not a data change and we know what we're looking for so if I just look for beacon you're gonna see that there are the sim connect events and these will work in a lot of cases however we're trying to do exactly what we're seeing created by the panel events 
So we're going to go with beacon light set. And we're going to set it to a value of 1. Now we're going to go to add event. We're going to go to when it's switched off. And what's great is this is going to be right on the last thing we were on. So there we go. And of course it defaults to 0, which will be the off. And now what we've got is our beacon lights configured and set up. So if we check out our view from here, and now if we move that beacon light, we see the switch move. And in the data manager or the event monitor, we also see in the event monitor that it went to a one and then it goes to a zero. Now let's intentionally change the switch in here. So that sets it to a one and it's on. And now our switch is not in sync. So if we push this to the on position, we send the one command, the switch does not move, they're back in sync. So now I've got my switch panel and the beacon light set up and ready to go. Now one of the things that we haven't done is deal with the panel events. Unfortunately, these uh, dimmers don't follow their LVAR events anymore. This is due to the introduction of the B event system with software update five. And we're gonna find this with things like the TVM inertial separator and some other devices where things that were using those XML LVARs, the switches are no longer updating. But that is what it is. So for the nav lights, we use the exact same approach. We came into the sim, we went to our nav light, we switched it, we saw that it used the Microsoft Flight Sim or MSFS nav lights set event. So when we were picking our event, we added the action, we sent simulation event, and we took from that same Microsoft Flight Sim which we can funnel or filter on just those. But we took nav light set, we set it to a one, and then for the off state, we set it to a zero. And so now when we look and we move the nav switch, our nav light goes on. Strobe, we ended up doing the exact same thing. We went into the sim, we moved the strobe light. This one though was using the sim connect strobe set. So as you can see, Microsoft extended a lot of the standard SIM Connect events. So they wanted to use the set events for, for these switches and where they needed, they have added Microsoft Flight Sim events and where they already existed, they leveraged and kept them. When we look at taxi lights, same thing. If we come in and we move that taxi light switch, we see that they added the taxi light set because in the original SIM Connect stuff for P3D and FSX, they only had a taxi light toggle event. And so there you had to put data to check the state of the taxi light before you would send the toggle event. What's nice is now we can use the taxi light set event. Landing lights works the exact same way. We just moved it inside of the SIM. We saw SIM connect landing light set. We use that exact same approach for the on and the off. We've got our pedo heat and with pedo heat, you'll see that it used the pedo heat set, but we still had the older pedo heat on and off event. And that one was left intentionally. So you can see that where there's ons and offs, they may still work because it's setting the one and the zero. So it's up to you if you want to use those events where, where possible. Alternatively, this could be operated in the exact same way where we use the set, we give it a one. And instead of sending the off event, we use the set to a zero and now it matches. De-icing. Um, here, there is a de-ice or 
alternate static source in case you get iced up on the front. And you could see there, unfortunately, it is using a toggle event. So what we had to do was we had to make sure that we first checked that the alternate static source was open. And again, I didn't know this exact one. I saw that we were toggling the alternate static. So I just simply came in for the condition because we wanted a condition. So it's add condition. You select the data. And I typed in alter. And you see it just starts filtering it down. And I could see, oh, alternate static source. That's got to be it. And so we grabbed it. And if it's a zero, so if it's not on, then when switched into the on state, then it's fine to send the toggle event. If it was already out, then when this switch goes into the on, the condition won't be valid. It'll say, oh, well, switched on. That's not a zero. I don't do anything. And then same thing for the switched off event. We check to make sure it is in a one state. And then we go ahead and we send our toggle. So that guy there, if we put this intentionally out of sync, then when we first switch it, you'll see that the rocker switch goes up, but it stays in the on position. When we go back to off, it goes back in. Coming over to our fuel pump. So again, same process. We come into the sim. We'll go ahead and we'll clear this out for now. We just come into the sim. We flick that fuel pump and we see it put Microsoft Flight Sim. Select fuel pump one set to a one variable and a zero parameter on that variable. So we did the exact same thing. When it switched on, we came in, we grabbed the electric fuel pump one set. It's a one for the on, it's a zero for the off. And of course, now our switch works perfectly. When we start looking at the avionics, this is where some stuff is a little different. So what you're gonna see is when we move each one of the avionics switches, there are electrical circuit toggles and bus to bus connection toggles that take place. Now, that was a little bit more difficult to figure out. So we came in for avionics, same thing. We were setting the event and we looked for avionics. And you'll notice there really is only one master switch for avionics. And so we decided to take that, uh, set it to a one in the on, set it to a zero in the off. And as you can see, that will switch both events and you'll see it do the bus to bus toggles and bus to bus connections get made as well. So we're going to go ahead and keep that event uh, as the only thing that's a little bit different. But again, there you're kind of searching for the switch. I want to do avionics. I'm probably going to find avionics. Alternator. So again, we flipped the switch. Uh, we saw that it was alternator set to one. And then when we turned it off, it was alternator set to zero. So then we've got our master battery and same thing. If we come in and we move this switch, it will toggle the master battery. And so what we did was we came in, we looked for Microsoft Flight Sim. So we went ahead and we said, let's look for battery events. And you could see all the battery events. And I chose the specific electrical master battery one. And we went with that. We set it to a one. And on the off, we set it to a zero. And so now when we go ahead and we turn on our battery, battery goes on. 
alternator goes on. We got our avionics ready. Our magnetos, this was pretty straightforward. The magneto off, right, left in both events work perfect. Uh, however, for the starter, it does have a different event. So if we go ahead and we step through the same events, um, so if we go ahead and move the key, you'll see those same magneto sets. Now they're using magneto one. So if we really wanted to, we could have used magneto one set and gone through all of the zero, one, two, um, three events. However, the both, the rights, the lefts, those all work just fine. Now, when we get to the start phase, we had the same problem. If you put magneto start, it kind of doesn't really work. But if you turn the key in the sim, you'll see this new event, Microsoft Flight Sim Set Starter 1 held. And so it'll hold it, and then after a few seconds, it sets it back to the both state, and it turns off the starter held. So what we did was we came in, and we gave ourselves those same events. And you'll see that when we go into the start, it triggers it, and then it's automatically going to go back. So when we switch back to both, we're setting the both command, and of course, we're set in the exact same place. So that's literally the approach I take to trying to figure out, first with events, if we can use the event system, flick the switches in the cockpit, and then go search using the filters. So as you can see, it's very easy to use, and we'll just come back in and focus a little bit. So again, real quick recap, our magnetos using the standard magneto off, right, left, both events, and then we're throwing in the, that new set starter one held to an event parameter one. The battery is using the, the electrical master battery event, and we chose a specific Microsoft Flight Sim variable for that, and then that way we're setting the one in the zero and the on off, Alternator set, we're using the set event with one and zero. Avionics master, that's going ahead and it's also using the uh, set switch to one or zero. Our fuel pump is using the set. De-ice, we're using toggle anti-ice. Pedo heat, we're using the set. And then of course, all of the lights using their set events. Now 172 doesn't have a um, cowl. So you can go ahead and assign anything you like to it. You're also going to find the parking brake. So I went ahead, since there is no landing gear on this plane, and we put the parking brake uh, on the gear up, gear down. Then, of course, we've got our landing gear lights. Well, I've gone and I've used the left and right as fuel gauges. So this is going to check the amount of fuel and the quantity and it's going to either be green, yellow, or red. And then we're using the nose gear light. This is going to tell us whether or not our parking brake is set. So currently, our parking brake is set. We set it into the off position, and that light goes out. So parking brake is now off. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. And that way you'll get notified when the videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.